All right, guys, welcome back to the Fit Body Secrets podcast, where my goal is to bring you guys education, inspiration, motivation, and a ton of action steps to hopefully help you guys be more successful in your fitness journey. And today's episode is actually something that I experienced today and thought it would be really, really helpful for all of you guys out there to kind of get some tips from me on the things that I do in these situations or in these situations. And so hopefully this episode will help you guys out. And I apologize. I am still getting over whatever cold hit me last week and it has been quite the struggle bus this week. So, and that's probably why this happened to me today. Cause I know that my nutrition has not been as routine as it normally is, but more of a plug for why you guys should actually be very consistent with eating because when you're not in your consistent habits, it definitely tends to affect you in a negative way. And I know today that I was probably experiencing a little bit of that rebound effect. Cause I've been a little bit under this week with not feeling as well, not having much of an appetite. So basically today I had my whole day planned out, my normal food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, my pre and post workout, all that kinds of stuff. I came home from my training session to have my bowl of oatmeal uh, with my protein powder, which I love. It's like one of my favorite snacks, Uh, but I was craving something a little bit sweet right when I got done. And I was like, oh, you know what? I have a little bit of um, calories left over. I want to have some chocolate chips and I have some chocolate chips that I keep in my freezer And I took some out and I plugged them in. They fit perfectly. I weighed them out, everything like that. Had the serving and I'm like, "Mm, I kind of want another serving of those. And I had this decision to make in that moment of like, am I going back to get more? Am I going to just wait it out? And I was looking at the time and I found that I was honestly like wanting another serving of them. And before I go into my strategy, because it did, it was going to throw me over for the day is... I want to start by just kind of addressing when these things happen, what we have to really ask ourselves is, and and it was something that I was troubleshooting in my head that I thought would be really helpful for you guys is, all right, am I actually hungry? Like, can I not stop thinking about eating? Am I getting a craving? And is it triggered from hunger or is it just an actual wanting to eat something? Am I stressed? Am I you know, and I think that if I looked back at this week, like I said, I have been a little bit under on calories a few days. Um, I've been under a little bit of stress because even though you guys might not, might not see being sick as a actual mental stress, it is a physical stress in the body and my sleep has been off and coupled with that, we're now in the third week of the open. So there's been a lot of other things going on aside from just being really busy. And actually yesterday and today, I've actually taken some time off and, um, I've had a little bit more time to myself, which has been very different than what I'm used to. And so I think that there is a combination combination of things that were going on in that moment today. And I know I'm going off on a tangent, just talking about these dark chocolate chips, because I want you guys to understand that sometimes it's important to actually reflect on these things before you just start beating yourselves up for being like, oh, I just couldn't practice any willpower or like, why could I not stop eating them? There's really reasons that are going on up here that we're not recognizing. And so for me, as I reflect there was a lot, you know, like I said, I've been under eating a little bit. And when I say under eating, just a little bit, I haven't been purposely under eating, but just being sick, you know, your appetite's kind of low, um, you know, some stress and things like that. And honestly, I just really wanted the taste of chocolate. Like I wanted the, the, the salty or the, I'm sorry, the salty, the sweet, the crunchy, the, the melt in my mouth feeling I, I wanted that. And, and every once in a while, it's okay to give in to a craving Now, if this is something that happens routinely, then I have to probably address like, why am I keep having these cravings? But they don't happen very often to me, but when they do, I'm going to give you guys some strategies that I would do to hopefully help you. So first and foremost, um, my number one strategy is guys, I know that keeping a food journal is like just one more thing in your life that you're like, okay, do I really have to be tracking how much I'm eating every day? No, you don't have to, nobody has to do anything, but it can honestly be very helpful for you guys who do have these times to kind of look back and reflect and see, all right, like where, why are these happening? Like, am I under eating things throughout the week? Um, But often in these situations, I can now make some adjustments to things to stay within where I need to be for the day. Um, But keeping a food journal is so important because it does really help you, not just from a weight loss perspective, but just to understand like what foods make you feel best, what foods you gravitate towards in situations and stuff like that. So Number one is this is going to, this episode is going to be very relevant to those of you guys out there that do keep a food journal and really only to those of you guys out there that keep a food journal. If you track macronutrients, um, or you're trying to, to kind of lose body fat 
this is going to be very relevant to you because whether you are trying to lose or you are trying to maintain a lean physique, these things are going to happen. It is inevitable that at some point you are going to cave and have one too many chips, a little bit too much guac, a little bit too much alcohol. And there are some things that we can do in a calculated fashion to troubleshoot them that are not just, I'm going to binge and restrict and binge and restrict, which is, I think what often people are so used to. And I'll be honest, I was that person at one point in my life. I was super strict on my diet, super clean eater, didn't eat anything. Like I would have never even had dark, dark chocolate chips in my house. But then like a Saturday afternoon would come and we would go out to eat and I would eat way too much and I would feel like crap and I'd go home and I'd eat some more. And then I'd swear I was never going to do it again. And then sure enough, two weeks later, it happened again. And I would, I would do this to myself. And in fact, I know that I had some very restrictive behaviors afterwards, overcompensation behaviors and things like that, where I would just under eat for a couple of days and hopefully it would offset the calories. And Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there was some merit to that, but I also wasn't feeling my best. And this is where people don't understand that weight loss, fat loss, maintenance, isn't just calories in calories out because sometimes when you underfeed, things tend to go a little off and, and you actually end up burning less calories. So it doesn't end up your body's a lot smarter than you think you are. You think you can outsmart doesn't always happen that way. I know I'm getting off on a tangent, but that's because I, uh, I'm really passionate about today's episode because it it was something that actually I experienced today. So going back on, uh, if you do track things, if you are kind of super dialed in, this happened to you, um, I'm just going to pull up my notes because I hate looking at myself anyways, and kind of uh, give you guys some to kind of get where I wanted to get to. Okay, here we go. All right. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the most ineffective thing you guys can do to compensate for overindulging. And this is anything from as small as an extra 200 to 250 calories to you over eight and you had an extra thousand calories, whatever it might be. Okay. Number one is overcompensation by doing extra workouts is not the right way to go about this. Why? Because our body has finite energy. And even though we are often overfed with calories It doesn't mean that our mental and our physical body is going to be able to respond well to the stress of training. So I think that it is common for people to overindulge and then like go take an extra orange theory class or an extra CrossFit workout or go for an extra run. And those things can actually make the cycle worse uh, because they actually just add stress. They add more fire and or add more fuel to the fire. And So I think if anything, if you're looking at movement as a way to compensate, if anything, I would honestly just keep yourself in your normal routine um, and maybe just getting in a little bit more overall activity without the emphasis on an actual workout. Um, So maybe it's doing a little extra walking. Maybe you are doing a few more house chores or things like that. And I actually apologize that it's so dark right now, but the freaking light in my kitchen is so light. It's so bright that when I actually have myself on camera, it like, just looks like I have a huge halo on that is for those of you guys that are watching on YouTube. But if you're on my podcast, you don't even care about that. So back to the subject is don't, don't focus so much on the compensation by exercise, because I just think it's actually often very minimal in terms of the actual effectiveness of it, because there's only so many calories we can burn uh, with activity. So If anything, extra walking, extra movement, a little extra, you know, walking a little further, cleaning your car, you know, just little things to keep you a little bit more active throughout the day. It actually also helps you in a way that's positive because it makes you stop thinking about what you did. So when you're actually not just sitting there dwelling on something, it's actually a little bit easier for it. So that would be my recommendation if movement is something that you tend to gravitate towards, towards uh, the compensation factor. Um, don't get into the whole like cleansing and fasting and all that kind of stuff, because all of that ends up going really into the, the binge restrict cycle. So those two things are things that I would not do now going into what I would do is I really put that there's three main things you can do. And one of them is what most people should do. Most of the time is honestly, you just move on. If it was two to 250 calories and you know that trying to sit there and negate things is going to add more stress and honestly make you feel worse about yourself, like just move on, like call it what it is, move on to your next meal, your next day and be okay with that. What I would say is 
make a note of the incident and the behavior and how you felt. Once again, this becomes going to be mindful because honestly, it could be a sign that you might need more food. And this is where having a nutrition coach to guide you through this can be really helpful for those of you guys out there, because you might not know what you don't know about your needs. Um, it's very easy to go online and find a calculator. Uh, but oftentimes those calculators don't take into fact like your mental stress and things like that. And there might be other things that you can do that might offset these behaviors and make them or stop them from happening. So, but tip number one is just move on. Like, don't think about it. Just move on, call it what it is. You ate a little too much. You moved on. Uh, now, if you are somebody that is like, I am so dialed in, I can't fucking believe I did this. Like, you're just, you know, you're that dialed in. Or you're like me, you've been doing it long enough to where like you've learned and you know how to kind of like just reel things in is you can tweak the plan. And I'm going to show you something um, that I, I kind of worked up on my fitness pal. So if you're watching on YouTube, you will be able to see this. Um, just give me one second while I pull it up. All right. So I actually already added it in there, but let's just say. Uh, I'm going to take out, okay, let's just say that, um, my numbers were supposed to be 185 on carbs and uh, 60 on fat and 135 on protein. And this day I had this beautiful plan of having, um, you know, oops, not want to do that. Let me just fix this a little bit for you guys. Um, this beautiful plan where I worked out, my breakfast was going to be this, these eggs and an English muffin with some cheese. I was going to have a stir fry bowl with some jasmine rice for lunch. I had my post-workout shake. Um, and I was going to have dinner of like a taco bowl with potatoes and then some yogurt and some dark chocolate chips, um, before bed. And then somewhere around, like, I don't know, maybe it was right after lunch. I was getting a craving for some sweets and I decided to have some Hershey kisses and, Originally, that wasn't going to throw me over too bad. And it just made me really, really start craving things. And then let's just say I was on my way home and the kids wanted some McDonald's and I caved and I decided that I also wanted to get some French fries and an ice cream cone. And this would be kind of a more extreme. Like, so for me today, what I would call myself is I was the girl that decided I'm just going to have the Hershey kisses. I didn't have the McDonald's, but let's just say that this was you and you're like, oh, I, I really screwed things up. Now, the number one thing to do is if you move on, you move on, right? Because at the end of the day, if this person's calorie needs were supposed to be 18, 1900, they're at about 2,400. So they're over. It's not going to necessarily be um, diet friendly for them, meaning it's not going to put them in a calorie deficit, but it's also not going to make them gain weight. The scale might go up a little bit the next day because of sodium, but it's honestly still probably not too big of a deal. So but let's just say that this person does want to go ahead and try and like, see if they can salvage the day. If dinner and snack hadn't been eaten yet. And I know I've had plenty of sweets. What I'm probably going to start with is I like my nighttime snack. So I'm going to try and not get rid of it altogether, but I am going to try and tweak the calories of my dinner and my nighttime snack. So I'm going to first look at the most damaging number, which is the fat number. And I'm going to kind of see where I can pull some fat out from my dinner so maybe I'm going to skip the guacamole and maybe I'm going to change out the, uh, low fat or the, uh, low fat cheese for fat free cheese. And maybe I'm going to change out the beef that I had planned for some chicken breast. And that might be a few things that are just going to knock out some of the calories that I'd eaten earlier in the day. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to go with some chicken breast. and see if I can get some salvaging of my day this way. And this honestly is so much easier on your phone, but I am showing you guys on my computer because I wanted to actually have a visual for you guys. So look at it that all I did was change the cheese and the meat, and I've already knocked off uh, 11 grams of fat. Now, I honestly have had plenty of sweets today. I'm going to go ahead and cut out those chocolate chips at nighttime too, because I already feel guilty enough about the chocolate chips I had earlier. And I look at that and that also just knocked out some carbs and a little bit more of my fat. So then I'm going to look at the rest of my, um, uh, numbers. And I obviously have overeaten on my carbs and, 
um, I actually am over on my protein. So maybe I just go ahead and cut back on the amount of chicken I have at dinner time, which will also save me some calories. And maybe I'm going to take out the granola as well at my nighttime snack. And I'm going to show you something really cool that we can do to make that better. And now my fat gets a little bit lower. My protein gets a little bit lower. And maybe all I'm going to do is I'm going to change out those sweet potatoes that I was going to have. And instead I'm going to do like a cauliflower rice bowl instead. So I'll go ahead and add some cauliflower rice for, um, instead of the sweet potatoes and boom, look at that. I've already knocked out quite a bit. So if I wanted to do a little bit more, I can surely just take out the strawberries and keep the, actually I could honestly just take out the yogurt as well. See what happens. And if all I did was that, I now have pretty much salvaged that day for the most part, you know? Oh, I didn't even take out the cheese yet. There we go. So if I did that, I pretty much salvaged the day. I would honestly have called that fine. If I really wanted to still have the dessert, I probably would still have the dessert, the, the little yogurt in the granola cup. Now let's just say you wanted to do something different. Maybe you wanted to just keep your day the way it was. Um, the other option would be to essentially take a little bit of calories, a little bit of calorie cycling into plan. I'm going to go ahead and close this screen up is calorie cycling a little bit. So this is where it's not necessarily a binge restrict, but it's an actual plan of, all right, I was over by this much on Saturday. So can I go under a little bit on Sunday to make up for it? And this is going for those of you guys out there that are like, I really want to be dedicated and committed. And I really want to see some results and I want to stop this from happening again. So maybe you are trying to offset a little bit. I am okay with that. Like, I don't think that there is anything wrong with that as long as it doesn't become a common habit and that it's not this overcompensation that you're doing every single weekend. If that becomes something that we have to play with as a, as a coach and a client, as long as food relationship is still good, I'm also okay with that. But I do think that it should be taken with a little bit of caution because I think that some people can tend to get into this binge restrict mode, and it could trigger more binging in the future. So the goal really is, is that this was never a binge. It was just honestly overeating a little bit, having a little bit too much of something and wanting to still be on track with reaching my goal. So I totally think this can work. And basically what it's going to look like is, let's just say I was at 260 carbs. Maybe I take a little bit down off of my dinner, but I don't completely get negative, you know, so I, maybe I leave the yogurt in. Um, and just take a little bit from my next day. Maybe it's eating a little bit less at breakfast time um, or whatever, but really looking at the carbs and the fats the numbers that I was over and compensating there. And then usually that kind of works itself out in one day. The only other thing I'll say about that is if it's making you very miserable the next day, that's what's usually going to cause that binge restrict. So just watch your, the way you feel the next day and make sure that you're not actually really obsessive about it. And then it's not really consuming your thoughts. Like it should be very easy. It should be like, ah, I'll just cut out the oatmeal at breakfast. I'll have egg whites instead. And instead of eggs, you know, it's making little smart changes that don't really cause a huge lot of stress. Um, and that's really, that's really strategy, strategy number three, which is just doing a little bit of calorie cycling. So that was the main topic today, um, you know, mostly because I want to keep it kind of short. I don't want to over beat it because I think that it needs to be a lot simpler than you guys think. Uh, but the most important thing that I want you guys to get at is, is honestly, guys, you don't have to beat yourself up. It's also okay to log something and know that it didn't necessarily fit the plan. And this is exactly why, because sometimes what you think you ate that was so bad really wasn't setting you back that badly. And you end up beating yourself up over something that really didn't matter. Vice versa, people that don't understand how sometimes little things can really add up, um, don't even understand that. And they're constantly wondering why they're not losing weight. And the weekends are a huge piece of that. So it is the weekend. Um, when I'm recording this, you guys are probably going to get it on Monday or Tuesday, but uh, hopefully this will help you guys out. Um, and if you guys want any more help or any help kind of figuring out this kind of stuff, if, if this episode was helpful for you, please let me know, shoot me a DM, shoot me a message, and I will talk to you all next week. <laughs>